Thompson, Reverend O.H., then you should have the Gloucester City. First of all, I want to state that I don't want to see anybody laid off. Most of you people up here are friends of mine. We've worked together. We've coached together. Our daughters are friends. You know, and I know your job is tough, but has always been in this city, in the 35 years that I spent the fire department in this city, that when tough times came down, it was separated between all the departments. It was worked out between all the departments. One department was not singled out. You're going to lay off eight guys. You already have three guys you're losing through attrition. You're losing one third of the fire department in this town. You're placing this town, the residents, and the property of this town in jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah. Dollar budget for the fire department. How about the ambulance funds that are going into the general coffers and not back into the fire department funds? That's the same as that means for every department, right? Water and sewer, everybody who makes money and goes into general coffers in every town. And it can't be happening. That's happened. Right? That's just the procedure. We didn't make it. And actually, Jim, actually, Jim, what we do have is we want to make sure everybody gets their chance to come up and talk. So what we do have is we do have some some information that each and every council people are going to put out that's going to answer a lot of these questions. Okay. My, my other question is to you, Mr. Mayor. Listen to your statement in the opening. And you talked about Collingswood, you talked about Audubon and Belmar and all the other towns around us. But you left that one very important part. How many volunteers do they really have? We have 17. I believe we have 21 and two in, uh, two in school. 17. 17 per, per your volunteers. And most of your volunteers that I have talked to have told me they're not going to be able to handle Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And, and we don't expect them to. We don't expect them to. What I can do. <laughs> we don't expect them to, Jim. And like I said right now, the fire chief is working on a plan, and, and, and we're, going to, we're going to work on a plan. So we're going to come up with something. All right? And, and I want you to understand. This budgetary process is not over. This is a public hearing on the budget. The budget has not been passed. We are still talking to the CWA, the steel workers, and we're still talking. We're, we just got done sending a proposal to the fire department on past Friday. So, I mean, you know, this is not over. This is an ongoing thing. Okay, I, I, and I appreciate that. As a resident, I appreciate that. I pay probably one of the higher taxes in this town, okay? And I am retired, like you are retired. Okay, I work an extra job for the reason of paying my bills and taking care of my family the way I should. But we need to find another avenue so we do not lose these people. What you have to understand, the 24-hour ambulance is the greatest thing in the world, and this town needs that, especially with our senior citizen population. But if it wasn't Fred Swatcher, there is no ambulance, there is no first aid for another 8-10 minutes. Once you get a have no oxygen for four minutes, you're done. You're gone. So please, I don't have to do it. I'd rather not see anything. I understand you and the council's position, but please try to work it out because we don't need to lose these guys. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Like I said in my, my earlier statement, uh, we came into this year uh, thinking things were okay. Obviously, we were concerned because there was a new governor elected. It wasn't until April that we found out how much money we weren't getting compared to last year. Uh, about a year ago, I came to a council meeting and witnessed the swearing gate of eight firefighter EMTs. My son was sworn in that night and hurt. He has been a fire service since he was 18 years old. And he started out with Pine Road as a volunteer firefighter. Not even one year later, you were letting the same EMTs off. One year ago, you concluded there was a need to increase the fire department's staffing for efficiency. Why, not even one year later, did you find the need to reduce the fire department's efficiency and its staffing? A question? Is that a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it just wasn't read like a question. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I can only say that uh, after we've done our investigative uh, activities and, and looked at the entire operation, uh, looked at how much money we had to make up in a half a year's time, which was $1.2 million, we couldn't find anything else. Now, as we'll explain later, we did spread it across the board, okay? We did spread it across the board. It's not just the fire department. And there's no way, no way, that we would have hired that fireman last year if we knew what was going to happen in April of this year. Thank you. Thank you.
That's it for now.